I'm glad you've joined us on the interview. You may not realize it yet, but your life is about to change. I'm so glad you joined us on the interview. I'm Dr. Rick Wodge, and I have a dear friend who, we haven't seen each other in a long time, but I want you to know him because he is a man that is courageous and he is full of information that you're gonna to wanna to hear. His name is Avi Lipkin. Hello, Avi. Good to be on for the first time. <laughs> it's good to have you here at ITVN. Let's talk about what you're doing. You've got a stack of books and videos, and you, you are one busy guy. What are you doing in the States? Well, I've been speaking in uh, churches in the US, Canada, and Europe uh, for 27 years now. I'm Jewish, but I speak in Christian churches, mm -hmm. uh, warning about the threat of Islam mm -hmm. to Judeo-Christian Western civilization and democracy. Uh, and also I'm forming a Judeo-Christian Western Civilization and Democracy Party called the Bible Bloc, Israel's Bible Bloc, which will give for the first time representation to Christian believers, uh, Bible believers in Israel, uh, because to this day there have been some Christians in the Knesset, but they were part Communist Party members. Hmm. They did not believe in God. So I have a, a, a two-lane life. One, one lane is in the diaspora all over the world, and the other lane is in Israel, in the Knesset, in Jerusalem. So I'm hoping uh, with this party that I've been working on for a long time will finally be recognized uh, by the month of December this year, 2017, and we will start campaigning for the Knesset, mm -hmm. for our legislature, and uh, hopefully I won't have to travel so much to the United States anymore. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work to travel to the U.S. and drive cross country, which is what I'm doing right now, mm -hmm. and uh, good to be with you again. It's good to be with you too. We haven't seen each other in several years. Yeah. And uh, you look just as good, look like you're ready to take on the world. And, you know, since we've last spoken to each other, uh, there have been a lot of major world events that have taken place. Right. And it's almost a daily occurrence now in the news. You want to talk about that? Absolutely. Uh, you know, when I speak in churches, which is almost every night, mm -hmm. the first thing I ask, who here believes in God? So, of course, everyone's hand goes up. Who here does not believe in God? And then I say to them, well, my message is for people who do not believe in God. Mm -hmm. So so that, so that as to make them believe in God. Mm -hmm. And I say to them, you know, that I moved to Israel 50 years ago, in 1968. And at that time, Israel was surrounded by very, very hostile enemy states uh, led by Egypt. Egypt was a very tough uh, opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, we had many wars with Egypt. Mm -hmm. And uh, then all of a sudden, for many reasons, we have a peace agreement with Egypt. And I supported the peace agreement for two reasons. Number one, the Arabs cannot launch war against Israel without Egypt. So if you take out Egypt... Now, make, why is that? Because Sorry they, to interrupt you. They, because they have the most populous country in the Arab world. They have the most, the best army. Okay. And, that um, makes sense. And if you have peace with Egypt, you know, the other countries are not going to want to go to war with Israel. And the second thing is that as a result of the peace with Egypt, uh, we were able to broaden our economic infrastructure, which was suffering from many bottlenecks, and our population, our Jewish population doubled. We went from uh, uh, two or three million to six million. Uh, our Christian population is 500,000 in Israel, which is 100,000 Arab Christians, 300,000 uh, Russian Christians and others. And uh, what I've been seeing is that the Christians don't have representation in the mm -hmm. Knesset. Mm -hmm. And they serve in the army, they pay taxes, they vote, and they're married to us. Mm -hmm. So it says in the Bible, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. So mm -hmm. we are not really blessing the Christians as much as we could. Uh, it is true that the status of Christians in the Holy Land is better than anywhere else in the Middle East. Right. But uh, if you're talking about representation, no taxation without representation. Mm -hmm. And this is... This is my motto, because I was yes. born and raised here in America on the lap of the American Revolution. No taxation without representation. So anyway, so Egypt, uh, you know, Islam does not like the Jews. 
uh, in the Quran, it says that the Jews are the most implacable enemies of Allah. In the Hadith, it says that every Jew must be killed and Jews will hide behind rocks and trees and Allah will give mouths to the rocks and trees and they will call out, come and kill this Jew hiding behind me. Uh, in the Hadith, it says Jesus Christ is coming back a second time as an Arabic speaking Muslim warrior to kill the Jews on Saturday and the Christians on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Because in case you didn't know it, I know you know it, but Christians are Jews. In the eyes of Allah, in the eyes of Islam, Jews and Christians are one people, and the only difference between us is that Jews keep the Sabbath on Saturday and mm. Christians keep the Sabbath on Sunday. Therefore, mm. slit the throats of the Jews on mm. Saturday and slit the throats of the Christians on Sunday. And you know what? The Egyptians believe it. The, the, the Egyptians follow it. But as you know, after the Arab Spring, uh, you have all these ISIS groups in Egypt, in Sinai, mm -hmm. and the Israeli army is very active as an ally of the Egyptian army. So our relations today with Egypt are better than ever. And I actually see Coptic Christian pilgrims coming now from Egypt. You didn't see this for the first decades. Hmm. So relations with Egypt are improving, but those who are of the Islamic persuasion still hate the Jews in Egypt. Okay. But Egypt is out of the circle of confrontation states, so we don't have any major wars. Okay. Then you have Jordan. Uh, Jordan is what we used to call the best of enemies because we always had good relations with them, even when they were enemies. But in 1994, uh, Yitzhak Rabin, our prime minister, mm -hmm. of blessed memory, um, made a peace agreement with Jordan. I thought that was wonderful. And you know, I have to tell you something. I remember when I moved to Israel 50 years ago, that the Jerusalem Post would talk about how the Jordanians did not have water in their taps five days of the week. They had water two days of the week. Their water was rationed. They don't, have, they don't have water. When the Jordanians signed a peace agreement with Israel, Israel now is responsible for all their water supplies. Now, Israel doesn't have abundant water, and the Sea of Galilee is in the low. Uh, the rain, you know, you cannot rely on the rain in Israel. So Israel has been spending a lot of effort, a lot of money on desalination plants. Yes. So today, 70% of the water that the Israelis drink is desalinated water from the Mediterranean. And we give the Jordanians all they need. So now, as a result of peace with Israel, if you bless Israel, you will be blessed. Jordan now has water in their taps 24-7. And if you remember the civil war in Syria, uh, you have 1.6 million Syrian refugees living in Jordan. Israel provides all the water for the refugees too. Wow. <clears throat> And so, you know, if the Jordanians want to go to war tomorrow, uh, we just turn the taps off. <laughs> so we have them over a barrel, but literally, yeah. I, I'll, you know, I'll tell you something else also. I moved to Israel 50 years ago, studied Hebrew University in Jerusalem. And I remember at night, I'd look out over the Jordan Valley, Jordan River Valley, and I could see the lights of Amman up on top of the mountain, but the Jordan River Valley was black. There was nothing. And Israel has been helping the Jordanian farmers with drip irrigation. So the Jordan Valley now is lights. You look down at the Jordan River Valley. We have helped Jordan to develop. Uh, we give them the water. We give them, you know, the uh, uh, drip irrigation. And the Jordanians are doing pretty well. Mm. And that's because I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. So Jordan and Egypt are friends with Israel. The Jordanians who are of Muslim persuasion, hate our guts, and ISIS is very strong in Jordan for their own reasons. Um, now, how does that work out with the border? Because when I was there last, there were a lot of Jordanians coming over to work on a daily basis in Israel. You know what? I have to tell you, I have an olive tree and I pick the olives. I, I cure them myself. I love olives. But there's also a, uh, a, a company that makes olives called Futsat Yavne, and they're near Ashdod. And uh, they, I met one of the uh, leaders, one of the managers. We get truckloads every day from Jordan of olives. We cure their olives. And then these are sold as Israeli olives, but they're Jordanian <laughs> olives. They're very good. I love them very much. So there is a very good relationship right. with Jordan. And it's also funny, I live on the main road from the Jordan River Valley to Jerusalem, so very often I'm on Mount Scopus. And so I see uh, cars with Jordanian license plates that drove over from Jordan. And they op their windows are open, and I say to them, Alam, and, and he, which is like, you know, welcome to Israel. And they smile. And, 
Uh, because people are people. People can be good people. They can be friendly exactly. people. Right. Uh, the problem is the system. And so you have in Jordan today uh, a very strong ISIS movement. I believe it's 82% of people support ISIS. Uh, the, Why? And because it's ISIS is Islam. You cannot say that the terrorism that we are witnessing all over the world today is not Islam. It's Islam. It is Islam. Um, it's just it's taken literally in an orthodox manner. How does it differ? How does it differ from, you know, my own faith as a Christian? Right. If I look back at the crusade period, I, I just shudder. I shudder at the ideology of the time period and the theology being manipulated to kill anybody who wouldn't convert. I mean, I see a lot of similarities from my own backyard. Right. So how does it differ? Okay. You know, I'm a history student. Yes. And one of the reasons I love going to church every night and on Sundays uh, is to be a teacher, a history teacher. And I'm a Jew, but I'm received in the churches. By the way, Christ was a Jew, so. <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard that so much. And uh, so I go and I reconfirm the Christian's faith because Israel and the Jewish people need a strong Christian America and a strong Christian Canada and a strong Christian Europe. And so I spend a lot of time traveling to teach all these things. Now, about the Crusades. The Crusades are a legitimate reaction, as much as we Jews paid for that, uh, a legitimate reaction to the Islamic invasions of Europe. And don't forget that uh, when the crusade started, that uh, the Holy Land was under the conquest of the Arabs, of the Muslims. Um, and indeed, the crusaders did some really horrible things. And they even went into uh, Constantinople, which is Greek Orthodox, and slaughtered the you know, Catholics. There were no Protestants at the time. Right. Uh, slaughtered the Greek Orthodox uh, Christians. Many Christians died at the edge of the sword of the Franks, of these uh, different uh, crusader groups. But you have to remember, this was an historical process, an historical reaction to the Islamic conquest of Europe. Why did the Muslims conquer Europe? They had no business conquering Europe, but they conquered, so the people reacted. Mm -hmm. You know, 1215, there was a very anti-Semitic doctrine, uh, a document called the Magna Carta. Yes. And the Magna Carta was very anti-Semitic. It forbade Jews in England. But the Magna Carta said, we're going to control the powers of the king because people didn't like Prince John. And what we see in the Renaissance, what we see in the Enlightenment, what we see in the American Revolution, what we see in the American Civil War, the freeing of the slaves, and the Jews always stood by the blacks because we were slaves together with the blacks in Egypt. Sure. Okay. And women got suffrage in 1920 in the United States and different parts of Europe at different times. And so the human race has progressed a certain a very certain way. Islam has not progressed. Islam is still in the crusader mode. In other words, whereas the Christians did progress and the Jews and the Christians came close together, especially after World War II, uh, Islam is still in a conquering crusader mode. Okay, now when you say that, are you speaking about radical Islam or, or what about the common person in New York who's a Muslim? Okay, now uh, according to law enforcement, the experience I was had in Canada, which I think is the same like in America, law enforcement says that 90% of the Muslims are peacekeeping, law-abiding citizens, living the American dream, or the Canadian dream, or the European dream, 90%. Now, if you have 6 million Jews in America, mm -hmm. and if you have 30 million Muslims in America, which I believe is the correct number, because you have 4 million Nation of Islam, 9 million Shiites, 7 million Sunnis, I think it's more than 7 million Sunni Arabs, and then you have Turks and Bosnians and Albanians and Chechens and Indonesians and from Asia, from Africa, Turks, uh, 30 million. It's, it's like a, an open secret. Nobody really wants to go into, and you really cannot, according to American law, uh, judge people according to their religion as far as a census is concerned. So if you have 30 million people in America, you have 3 million terrorists. How many people brought down the World Trade Center? 19. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. These terrorists, the 3 million of them, do not believe in gun control. Uh, Jews uh, are in favor of gun control, many of them. And they're the first who will be killed by those people who say, we're going to kill every Jew on the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. The fat acts. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, 90% are peacekeeping, law-abiding people, right. wonderful right. people. Yes. But unfortunately, the 10% leads the, the whole group. And if you are a moderate Muslim 
and they need you and they come to your house, let's say you're Mr. Mohammed and you're a computer uh, expert, I mean, you're a real genius and your wife is Muslim and your kids are Muslim and you're living the American dream and they come one day and they say, we need you, we're going to bring America down in a massive cyber attack, are you with us? Because you're, you're a computer expert. He says, well, I'm living the American dream. Well, let us tell you what's going to happen. If you are not with us, we're going to rape your wife, slit her throat, take your children away from you, because they shouldn't be raised by infidels, because you're an infidel, obviously. And then we're going to chop you up in pieces. So, so the moderate, so-called moderate Muslims will do what they are told. Otherwise, they are the first to be killed by the fanatic Muslims. And, and, and that's horrific to even think yeah. about. Are you even suggesting or saying that that even takes place in America? Absolutely, it does take place. And uh, there's also an unreported killing of Jews already taking place, an unreported killing of Christians in America already taking place. And we could easily spend an hour uh, just documenting things that I picked up in my travels. Because I travel north, south, east, west. I'm on the Mexican border in the winter. I'm on the Canadian border in the summer. Uh, I'm all over the US, as you see, I'm traveling. I'm, mm -hmm. Uh, this is really, really scary stuff. And the media is controlled by advertising revenues. Oh, yes. And so it's the banks, the corporations, the oil companies. Yeah. Many of your politicians also don't want to talk about it because they're on the take too. Mm -hmm. And Sean Hannity had me on a show and he got really angry with me. And, and, you know, because I said, all your presidents in the end, they do business with the oil companies. And, you know, Bill Clinton got half a million dollars as a result of the uranium deal, you know. Sure. So right. I mean, it's all money. It's all about money. Republicans, Democrats. Uh, so the horrors of Islamic terrorism are always camouflaged or, or ignored by the media. And one of the reasons I'm forming this Judeo-Christian party in Israel is because I believe that as the, the tens of millions of Muslims continue to pour into the United States, the, the likelihood of massacres against Jews and their Christian spouses. We have 80% intermarriage between Jews and Christians in America. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to see many, many people fleeing to Israel. Now, is that a shift? Intermarriage? No, no, it's always been like that. Has it? Yeah. You know, I have to tell you, one of the uh, questions I'm asked is, uh, uh, why did the Jews vote Democrat? Why did the Jews vote, you know, Obama? And I say to them like this, I said, listen, the Jews uh, in America have been here from day one. Savannah, uh, Charleston, South Carolina, Providence, Rhode Island, New Amsterdam, New York. These Jews fought in the American Revolutionary War. These Jews fought on both sides in the Civil War. Where are they today? They are you. In other words, in the churches, everybody has some kind of a Jewish great, 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 great grandfather. Mm -hmm. Sure. I had dinner a few weeks ago in Charleston with a Jewish guy who is 11 generations in Charleston and his family fought in the Revolutionary War. Uh, where are they today? They intermarried, except for a handful maybe, and today they're Christians. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The Jews who vote Obama, the Jews who vote Democrat, are the Jews who came, the newcomers who came in the last hundred years from Russia, you know, Eastern Europe, the Russian Orthodox Church, which used to kidnap and kill our people, the Nazis who killed our people, the Catholics who expelled us and killed our people, mm -hmm. and, uh, and inquisitions and all this. Mm -hmm. 1900 years of bad blood, with the Christians. And so they come to America. They don't know who the Protestants, American Protestants are. They don't know, they don't care, they want to know. So if Christians support the Republican Party and are patriotic, Jews will go to the Democrat Party, even though the Democratic Party today is very anti-Semitic. I never thought of that. Yeah. So when will it all end? When the remaining Jews here intermarry with Christians and then they all become Republicans. <laughs> wow. Or the wow. Muslims scrape up the Jews and Christians like a giant spatula, which God has sent them to do, and send them all back to Israel. So I think we're going to see a massive immigration of six uh, to 10 million Jews and Christians, because when a Jew flees, he has to take, or he or she, have, they have to take the spouses and the children. Mm -hmm. And my political party will be the biggest party in Israel. Anyway, I, I wanted to finish, I'm looking at the clock, well, just a few minutes. Egypt and Jordan, allies of Israel, Syria and Iraq, they don't want to make peace with Israel. They want to curse Israel with war. So what does God do to them? God curses them. So they have war. Mm -hmm. Syria today is dismembered. Oh, Syria today is mess. shattered. What a mess. Iraq is shattered. Mm -hmm. The only good sign coming out of Iraq today is the Kurds. Mm -hmm. And I'm really praying to God that the Kurds have their independent republic. Um, let's look at the next state, Turkey and Iran. I think Turkey and Iran are also going to get dismembered. Mm -hmm. 
and Kurdistan is going to be our neighbor to the north. And if we had a lot of time, then we could do it. Uh, I know we don't have a lot of time, but these, these are the lectures that I do in the churches. I explain the historical trends in all of these countries. And the point is, those countries that bless Israel will be blessed. And those countries that curse Israel will be cursed. Right. And so I see Israel expanding. I see Israel going into Lebanon and delivering all the different ethnic groups, the Shiites, the Druze, the Christians, and the Sunnis, who are all threatened with death by the fanatic Sunnis, the fanatic mm -hmm. ISIS. Uh, Syria, in the south of Syria, there are like 700,000 Druze on the mountain of the Druze, and they're surrounded by ISIS, they're surrounded by fanatic Sunnis. And, and the Druze in the Israeli government, we have many Druze in our government, we have a, a minister under Netanyahu who's Druze, Ayub Kara, he says, let's take the mountain. Let us uh, put the, the Israeli flag over that mountain and protect those 700,000 Jews lest they be annihilated by the Sunnis. Mm -hmm. So Israel's borders expand to the east. Then the Christians in Syria, in Damascus, will say, well, what about us? The Sunnis are going to kill us too. Mm -hmm. If Russia pulls out of Syria, which Russia will pull out eventually, it'll be the end of the Christians and the Druze and the Shiites. Um, Israel's going to, it's manifest destiny. Israel's going to expand to the Euphrates, and we're going to link up with the Kurds. Uh, Avi, you are absolutely a brilliant historian. You're correct when you talk about history. Yeah. You're brilliant. I, I don't want to miss the opportunity to talk about this stack of books mm -hmm. that you have written. Let, let's talk about those. Okay, well, firstly, my first book, which came out in 1995, predicted 9-11, six years before it happened. And there are a lot of predictions here which have been fulfilled and some which have not yet, but they're on the way. Okay. This, this is my best-selling book. How, and, how can they get a hold of it? Well, these can be uh, bought on Amazon. Okay. They can be uh, bought, some of them, most of the, la the latter ones can be bought on Kindle. Okay. And of course, people can order them uh, from my website, which is avilipkin.net. Great. That's easy. Yep. Um, my second book talks about the shrinking of the Jewish population in the United States and the replacement of the Jews by the Muslims as now the number two. Because Jews are now six million, Muslims 30 million, we're number three now. By the way, Hindus are six million, so we may be number four. Jews, numerically, wow. Jews are becoming irrelevant. And President Obama, former President Obama, uh, to his credit, he said something very true. He said that America today is no longer a Judeo-Christian country. It is today a Christian-Muslim country. Christian, Muslim, comma, Jewish, Hindu. So the Jews are becoming increasingly irrelevant. And as the Jews intermarry more and more with Christians, the Jews basically are evaporating. That's why I'm saying I believe God has a plan to bring them home to Israel. Then, I see I didn't bring my third book. My third book, the red book, is called Islamic Threat Updates. And this gives a whole collection of articles from the press from all over the world. Uh, and uh, also, you know, I think one of the important things is the Oklahoma City bombing oh. was blamed on uh, Timothy McVeigh, Terry mm -hmm. Nichols, as right-wing Waco Christian militia. But that was a big lie. The Clintons committed treason on this one. This was a Saddam Hussein Al-Qaeda attack. And I was in Oklahoma at the time, and I have all the information in book number one, and in the red book, book number three. Book number four is the Bible block. This was written in 2006. And uh, this gives the whole history of modern Israel and why my party is a must. And I wrote this 12 years ago. Wow. Now I have a DVD, Great. which I just made, which is talking about now the party is going to exist very soon, which it will, God willing. And uh, so this is the, uh, the, uh, the guidebook for understanding Israeli mm -hmm. politics and my party. Book number five is called Islam Prophesied in Genesis. Mm -hmm. And this explains uh, why, according to my opinion, Allah is Satan, Allah is not God. Uh, Allah wants to kill the Jews on Saturday, kill the Christians on Sunday, kill the Hindus, kill the Buddhists, kill the blacks, and then the Muslims kill each other in the name of Allah. Excuse me, that is not God. Mm -hmm. That is the opposite of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it also talks about why Islam as a system is condemned in the book of Genesis, all the attributes. Book number six is a very important book. This is a, the book of Exodus, proving that the Israelites did 38 years of the Exodus in Saudi Arabia. Mm. And even the black phylacteries that Jewish men wear are replicas of the black stone. Mm. And I prove it mm. from, from the Bible. Uh, book number seven, which is my most recent book, 
gives an up-to-date explanation, very, very up-to-date, about what's going on in Syria, Iraq, uh, Turkey, Iran, Russia, uh, all these factors in what's going on right now as a result of the Arab Spring. And then I have two DVDs. Uh, one of them is about the Trump revolution, and I explain why Trump won, hmm. and it isn't because of Russia. Okay. Uh, the people were fed up. American politics is yeah. a pendulum. Every eight years, the pendulum goes right, left, right, left, right, left. And the great thing about America is that after the elections, the two sides usually c come together and have a beer. <laughs> <laughs> in the Middle East, you win the elections, you kill the opposition. Uh, and, then, and then I have, I have another one, like just the same cover with, with blue letters called the Bible Box, which is the up-to-date okay. uh, DVD on what's going on. And I have here also a, uh, a DVD, I don't know if I should show it because it's not mine, it's Jimmy Penny Caldwell's. Uh, and I would recommend people contact me, I will give them Jimmy Penny Caldwell's address okay. and you can order the DVD from them. But, and also, uh, we're going to talk, uh, I think, on another program about, about my son's DVDs, which proved the veracity of the Bible in the Holy Land. Jim and Penny proved the veracity of the Bible in Saudi. Love it. So this, all of these things prove that God exists and that his word is true. The Bible is not fairy tales. The Bible is absolutely true. And this, that's the purpose of my teachings, to strengthen the faith. Do you have a lot of material here? If the person was going and going to get one book, what would the book be? One of each. <laughs> They're all important. They're all important. If you're interested in modern day politics, get the most recent one, which is Islamic rivalry. Uh, if you're more of a Bible scholar, then I recommend Genesis and Exodus. And if you're more interested in terrorism and alliances of Islam to take over the U.S. and the world, get the first three books. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. And I've got DVDs and CDs I produced with Chuck Missler um, oh. many years ago. Yeah. Oh, but they're, still up, they're still up to date. Love Chuck Mister. I do too. Cut my teeth on him many, many years ago. So I appreciate it. I do. Tommy, I appreciate you. Uh, you are bold and you are courageous and you are running at full speed. Have yeah. you ever slowed down? Uh, I had a heart attack four years ago. Slowed you down a little bit. And they put me a pacemaker in a stent and I'm the ever you ready. Got my, <laughs> you've got my As long as God wants me running. <laughs> Avi, thank you. Thank you so great, much. Great to reconnect with you. Yeah, me too. And we'll do this again. Thank you so much for watching the interview. You know, we sure appreciate you on ITVN. Our family continues to grow and you're a reason for that. And uh, we just thank you for all the support you give to the programmers. We thank you for all the viewership and, and we just pray that you are blessed. Also, that you are blessed as you bless the people of God, the land of Israel, and the book that comes from there. Amen. And uh, we'll see you next week. Shalom, shalom.